The Indiana Pacers sit with the number 7, number 26, and number 29th overall picks in this year's draft in the first round. We're going to talk about prospects that could fit their needs in those areas right after this. Welcome to the number one place for your daily basketball news and analysis, NBA Central. What's going on, NBA fans? Welcome to another episode of NBA Central. I'm one of your hosts here, Hayes, holding it down for the squad. And we're continuing our draft profiles. We have made it our way through the first six picks of this draft with whatever picks they have after that. We're now at number seven with the Indiana Pacers, and they hold the number seven, 26th, and 29th picks in the draft. And we're going to talk about some of the prospects that could interest them. Again, there could be prospects outside this list for sure. This is kind of the list of, of targets that I have personally pinpointed for the Indiana Pacers in a case like this. And first up is Taylor Hendri- Hendricks. This is a player that a lot of people have asked about. 6'9", 210, power forward slash center, who has a good combination of size, mobility, and athleticism to play a bunch of different roles in the for- front court for NBA teams. When you look at how versatile he is offensively as well, uh, he has the potential to, to be a, a, a solid scorer at the next level, averaging 15 points per game on nearly 48% field goal shooting percentage in his in his collegiate career and he, he's good at, at being able to score without having the ball in his hands which is a great area for especially a forward uh to be in this league right uh, he finishes above the rim with excellent uh finishing ability on top of that uh he has nice explosion and power to finish around there even through contact which is good for him he's right now more of a face-up player than being a true post-up type guy at this level, does not mean that with his quickness that he has, uh, the size, things like that, he can't learn to beat bigger players. And he can't, uh, not to say that he can't learn more refined post moves if you get a coaching staff that can work with him on those parts of his game as well. He's an unselfish player, right? And he, he takes pride in his defense as well. And he's a pretty solid passer, having a nice uh, passer, uh, pass to turnover, assist to turnover ratio, I should say. And he has a nice three-point shot as well. That, can, that he can extend that game for him as well, especially on the corner. That corner three is going to be where he probably scores the most out on the three-point line when he is taking three-point shots. Doesn't have his problem getting his shot off. He has a nice release on his jump shot as well, and he's solid in the mid-post area as well. He needs to work on refining that game with himself a little bit more, but he's been working on a turnaround jumper, and if he can add like a hook shot or something to that as well, like I said, you can see the kind of the makings of a player that could turn into a decent post player there. He's going to have to add more muscle at the next uh, at the next level in the NBA, and he's going to have to l- learn to establish himself in that low post more consistently with that size. Um, so he's going to learn the post moves is something that you're definitely going to want to work on him with because with his ability to shoot, with his ability to get out and transition, things like that, if you can add a post game to that, you're looking at, at a player that could be pretty damn good as a combo forward at the next level, and then especially like with how centers are going now and the small ball centers as well, I think he can he can shape up to play a little bit of that. Not saying a lot of it of it, but a little bit. When you look at the six nine, two hundred and fifteen pound frame, we've seen players shorter than six nine play center in some cases. Especially if you're a Chicago Bulls fan and you watch a lot of Bulls games, you've seen a lot of six six and below players get some center minutes. But with that said, I really like Taylor Hendricks' potential on the right team, and he's more of a project. I do think he's going to take a little bit longer to come along in some areas, and if you have a team that can that can take that time to develop some of his things, you can have a hell of a prospect years down the road with Taylor Hendricks. Next up that we're going to talk about is Jerace Walker, another big forward, 6'8", 235 pounds with that 7'2 wingspan, big shoulders, solid frame, uh, has nice uh, vertical explosion on his game as well, which is something we talked about yesterday. He has a really nice a game for the modern day four and some small ball five as well. Versatile player can play multiple ends on both sides of the fours, is uh, potentially uh, guarding up and down the the line on defense. And he's a solid to 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 great potential as a rim protector on the next level as well. And that weak side, he's going to get a lot of highlight weak side blocks at the next level at some point, whether he's starting or coming off the bench. Um, and when he's driving to the basket, listen that size. And that, that's, that speed and those broad shoulders he has, that big frame is going to put some people on their ass, which is one of the concerns with him. Free throw shooting percentage, um, we need to get that a little bit together, right? But overall, like it, uh, he has he has nice uh, jump shot that shows enough mechanics that you can start you know working that into his game. He can develop a three-point shot, but it's not part of his game right now. And while he is def- uh, versatile with defensive defensively, the lateral quickness can be a thing on some of the more agile, quicker, 
uh, threes if you try to lo- uh, line them up against that. And if they have a small ball four who's also agile, give him a little bit of fits at times. But you're looking at him polishing this game off, especially as a finisher on that defensive side of the ball as well. I really do like him as a, as a prospect for this Indiana Pacers team. And the next one up, Asura Thompson. The same thing that we've said. He fits a lot of a lot of uh, potential places. It really depends on how his body is going to shape up or what uh, position you can play him in. He can go anywhere between the one all the way down to the three. And if he, depending on how much he can add to that frame, maybe some small ball four at times. But again, the explosive athleticism, especially in transition, if you're going to run a high tempo offense and, a, and a, a, have a defense that's going to get you out in transition a lot, you get him out in the open court. You get either Thompson twin. For sure, but if you get a sure Thompson out in the open court, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be killers there. Uh, he has a huge, high-level uh, defensive potential as well to possibly be a lockdown defender on the next level, finishes around contact well, has a nice little bit of adjustments there, and he's an extremely unselfish player as well. Not somebody at all who's going to be selfish or a black hole on the offensive side of the ball. Now, sometimes with some of his negatives, he can rely too much on his athleticism. It just is what it is there. Um, sometimes that his quickness, um, he doesn't have like the, 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 the super quick first step. And some of the times he can get caught defensively with that. Not really a natural score as, uh, as well, but he does have some of that scoring ability. So you can look at that trying to come along for him as well. And 65% from free throw range with his athleticism, with the way that he's going to get out in the open court with how he finishes as well. And even through contact, you want him to definitely fix that free throw percentage some and become a more solid free throw shooter um, for his team because he's going to get to the free throw line a lot, especially maybe early on in his career as well. But those are kind of my options that I like at number seven. That's not, that, like I said, that's not the full list. They can go a lot of different ways at that number seven pick. Uh, they can also look if Eamon Thompson drops that low, which I don't think he will um, as well. Grady Dick could be on their potential. I think that may be a little, a little bit of a reach for them. But those are kind of the areas in that in that top seven for them. Uh, if somebody drops, if a Cam Whitmore drops, somebody like that, I also like them for the Indiana Pacers. I just don't see Cam Whitmore getting lower than number five, in my opinion. But again, if he does drop as low as number seven, absolutely that's somebody that the Indiana Pacers should also take a look at. But let's go to the number 26 and 29th pick. And so any of these players that I mentioned here can really kind of fill in that area. First up, that a player that I have not talked about on any of these profiles yet is Derek Derek Whitehead out of Duke, 6'7", 220 pounds. Listen, this guy is one of the best perimeter shooters that you're going to find in this class, period. 43% on three-point attempts per game, solid there. Uh, at just an efficient player as well from behind the arc. Spot up, taking it off the dribble. He has a great motion. His shot is one of the prettiest shots you're going to find. And then when you add into that, his 6'7", uh, frame with a 6'10 wingspan on top of that, 217 pounds, about 220 now at the draft combine. So as he looks to continue uh, to fill that out, especially his lower half, he can take better advantage of that that solid first step that he has. Um, but, you know, he has to, he has to work on that. Uh, step back jumper that he learned to complement his game as well, that, that really uh, it's helping him be able to be a scorer both on the inside and outside the three-point arc. And he cuts pretty good for for a wing, right? He cuts there. I wouldn't call him a slasher, say that he has that slashing potential, but he's learned to cut and operate without the ball that gets him near the basket. And he has enough body control as well where he can finish solidly around the basket. He's an active defender, and he uses that length to guard either guard positions. And so that adds that versatility to him. Now, one of the things as far as negatives with him that you want to look at is that his athleticism and especially in college, looked a little off, but then it came out that he was dealing with a foot injury. So that foot injury may be why he slides even further in this draft. You gotta, you gotta be a little bit worried, especially when he starts to 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 be with athletes and feet. That can be a little bit thing that always causes a problem one way or another. And he doesn't get that get it as much lift as you would expect. But again, that could go back to that foot issue. And it seemed like he became a little bit more comfortable over time creating inside the arc. But that's something you're also gonna have to look at with him. And then um, 41% from two-point range. And you, 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 you want to watch out for that. And he has actually a negative assist-to-turnover ratio. So I don't know how much you're going to want him to be a ball handler for you, even at that guard position. That's kind of my thoughts on, on him. Derek Whitehead, I think, is a really good prospect, especially lower in this draft for a lot of teams. And then Noah Clownley as well. 6'10", 210-pound power forward. Um, mobile, 
can play either center or power forward for you. So depending on what the Indiana Pacers do with that with that first pick in the first round, it maybe can open them to be uh, to look at a power forward here. And I think Noah Clowney, modern day forward, he has the game for that. He's he's long, rangy. He can shoot the three. Um, he's he's growing as a defender as well, and he has good timing as a shot blocker. I wouldn't say that his rim protection is one of his best skills quite yet, but he is growing in that area, and I think there's enough to show there to say that he can be disruptive there for sure. Um, great finisher as well. He, uh, he, he gets through contact very well, 67% from inside that three-point arc. He has good hands. He can catch the ball around the rim, and he's a very good rebounder as well. Eight rebounds per game for him. Um, so that's the things you want to look at. Of course, like with most of these players, he's going to need to fill out that frame a little bit more to add to his base and his strength overall so he doesn't kind of get knocked around by a lot of front court players. And he can, if he gets caught on switches, he can, he can team players can blow by him, right? Of course, as a big, he doesn't necessarily have the best uh, lateral quickness, but a linear athlete running from front to back, he's, he has that all day long. A little bit of a tweener right now. That's not necessarily a negative in the modern-day NBA either. We're moving towards a lot of that. But again, somebody that you can take a look at there in that area. And then lastly, Bobby uh, Clintman. Uh, this is a, a 210, uh, sorry, a 6'10", 225-pound power forward slash center. He's lean uh, with that. He needs to put on uh, muscle to that frame. And it looks like he, he has the profile that looks like he can do that. He grew two inches during his time at Wake Forest, which is crazy to hear. Right, great body control. He moves pretty good for a player of his size. Um, he plays pretty good in the up tempo offense. Right, he has pretty solid perimeter skills. He thought shot around thirty seven percent field goal percentage, which for a power forward slash center is not the best. But again, something that you can look at at that three point as three point shooting percentage. Um, so pretty solid there, especially as the trail man on the on the break. Really good shot mechanic. So you can see that becoming a very big weapon for him at the next level as well. And so the, the one thing with him as well that you have to look at as far as negatives, right now he's a little bit better of an offensive rebounder than defensive rebounder, so look out for that. Um, he needs to get stronger if he's going to be able to compete really at that NBA level, and he needs to, as a, as a finisher inside the arc, 45% field goal percentage. Again, not the best, but not terrible either. You think with some development, things like that, he can definitely work on that. And he has a lot of the skills that you want to see from a player at his size, but those are kind of some of the players that I think the, that the Indiana Pacers should absolutely look at in this draft where they select some of the other options they can go later in those first rounds as well. Uh, Ryan Rupert, again, out of France, the, the shooting guard slash small forward that I've talked about. Chris Murray as well could be another one for them in that 20 range, depending on if he falls that low for them. Considering the Pacers' second pick is until number 26, he may not be on the board. And Amari Bailey is another one that I kind of like for that roster, but it really depends on what they're going to try to do going forward. So those are some names for the Indiana Pacers to look at. Let me know what you guys think on everything down below. Make sure you're following the show at NBA Central Pod on every social media platform. You can also send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, NBA Central Show at gmail.com. And then if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything NBA related, especially during this all season where you're going to get all the draft coverage, free agent shopping's coming up with the Cognac boys. C-Dub and Bobby are going to be handling that series. And then any breaking news as it happens over the offseason will be one of the first places to get a video out, guaranteed. But thank you so much for joining, and I'll see you guys the next time I feel like making a video. Probably tomorrow. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.